Okay, moving on to lesson four practice problems. For number one, it says a certain ceiling is made up of tiles. Every square meter of the ceiling requires 10.75 tiles, 10 and 75 hundredths tiles. So <clears throat> it's a number between 10 and 11, closer to 11, but greater than 10. Fill in the table with the missing values. Okay, so every square meter requires 10.75 tiles. So what we're going to do is when we're going this way, we're going to multiply by that 10.75. That is what we're going to do. So times 10.75. Every time when we're going this way, we're going to divide by 10.75. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. So when we do 1 times, now this is pretty easy math right here for this first one, but 1 times 10.75 is 10.75 tiles, okay? And then um, 10 times uh, 10.75, that's easy. Um, if you're just multiplying by 10, it just, uh, it's always worth it to talk about this. You're multiplying by a power of 10. 10.75, I'm gonna put the decimal down here. But we're multiplying by our power of 10, the decimal moves over uh, one place. Right there. That's it. That's all it does. That's all you gotta do when you multiply. If we multiplied by 100, it'd move over 2. Okay? If we divided by 10, if we divided by 10, it would move over here. It would move over to the left. But we're multiplying by 10, boom, there it is 107.5. Okay? 107 and a half tiles. Okay, and then the other one, uh, I'm going to use my calculator for this one, and I'm going to do 100 divided by 10.75, 100 divided by 10.75, and that comes out to a really long decimal, and it's like a 9.3023, I'm just going to round it, I'm going to round it so it's approximately 9.3 square meters, okay? And then for this last row, um, it's, it's very algebraic here, very algebraic. We've got a square meters, a square meters. So it's like some square meters, some number of square meters. So what we want to do is this abstract algebra, I know a little bit weird, but we're just going to write this out as, as an expression, 10.75a. That's it. Because that's what we were doing basically every time. We were multiplying this number by 10.75, 10 times 10.75. We didn't really multiply 9.3, but if we did, we'd get something pretty close to 100, not exact. And then A times 10.75 is literally 10.75A. That's it. For number two, on a flight from New York to London, an airplane travels at a constant speed. An equation relating the distance traveled in miles, D, to the number of hours flying, T is T equals 1 500th D. So 1 500th times the distance is equal to time. So how long will it take for the airplane to travel 800 miles? So this is kind of already set up for you. So this is giving us, for this problem, this is giving us the distance, right? Which is right here in that equation, in that setup. So what that equation is telling us to do is to multiply 1 500th times the distance, times 800, times 800. So you get, you get that, and then I just multiply left to right, I get 800 over 500. And one of my favorite things to do when you're reducing is when you have zeros, and those can cancel out. So you got 8 fifths. You got 8 fifths, which is 8 divided by 5. 8 divided by 5, top divided by bottom. And then a 5 goes into 8 once. You get a 3, and you bring down a 0. That's why I put a 0 there. And then 5 goes into 36 times. Oh, I forgot to bring the decimal straight up. But 1.6. So there you have it. This is 1.6 hours. So we just figured that one out. 1.6 hours for that one. Number three, it says each table represents a proportional relationship. All right, so that's given. And this 
part is blocking it. For each, find the constant of proportionality and write an equation that represents the relationship. All right, now it says it's proportional, so we really don't have to check everything. I mean, if you, if you are checking for proportionality, you would check every value. You wouldn't just go, hey, uh, eight divided by two, you know, eight over two, that's, that's four. That's the constant proportionality. And then totally disregard all these. But we can do that actually for this because it says so. It says that these are proportional. And, it, and if we want extra confirmation, because that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna do P divided by S, capital P divided by S, which is eight divided by two, which is four. And that happens every time you take the P and divide it by the S. 12 divided by three is four. 20 divided by five is four. All right, 40 divided by 10 is four. See, constant of proportionality right there. You got the same one every time. All right, so this one right here, um, and the next one, we're gonna do 6.2, we're gonna do, let me just make sure you know, we're gonna do C divided by D. So we're gonna do 6.28 divided by two, which is 3.14. That looks like pi. Oh, and that's kind of interesting. Circumference, diameter. All right, so there's a definite relationship there between circumference and diameter. And um, there's your, I'm not gonna go and do the rest, but there it is. Now we've got to turn this into an equation. We've got to turn this into an equation. So um, this one had a constant proportionality of four. So we're going to do P equals 4 times S. 4 times S. Right there. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 10 is 40. So there you go. P equals 4S. I know this looks like another math problem, which kind of is, but it's, that's what it's asking for. It's asking for the, the equation. Uh, for this one, the constant proportionality was 3.14. It was basically pi. So 3.14 times diameter. So circumference certainly does equal 3.14 times diameter. Pi times diameter is what that's going to be. So that's no coincidence. All right, number four. Okay, so we need to figure out <clears throat> for this one whether uh, one inch to 20 miles, one inch to 20 miles is equivalent to one to 1,267,200. And there's no labels there. So um, what I'm assuming, what since this is such a big number, what I think this is trying to do is like, how many inches are in 20 miles? So we have to kind of figure that out. Well, one mile, one mile equals 5,280 feet. 5,280 feet. And if we want to figure out what that is in inches, we just multiply by 12. So you multiply by 12, I think it's like 63,000 something. So you get 63,000. 360 inches. Now that's one mile, right? One mile. One mile equals 63,360. Now let's see what happens when I multiply that by 20 miles. Multiply that by 20, and lo and behold, you get the same number that is up here. You get 1,267,200. Now, obviously, well, I, mean, I don't know if it's obvious, but Obviously, this is a much easier to understand scale. You know, one inch equals 20 miles. I, I highly doubt, highly doubt they're going to give you a scale like this, like one to 1.2 million. That's kind of obnoxious. So you're not probably going to see something like that. All right, so here's a polygon on the grid. That's it for number five. No, we got some questions. Uh, so for number five, we got... Um, Draw a scaled copy of the polygon using a scale factor of three. So that means we're going to multiply all the, the side lengths by three. <clears throat> so this is two. These are all two. 
All right, and so we're going to multiply those by three. So two times three is six. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to just use this space right here. That's six, and I'm going to make this six. There's three, and there's another three. There's three, another three. And then I'm going to be very careful about this part right here, the triangle part. Now the triangle here, I, I don't want to really, I mean, I know it's, some of you do it this way, but I'm not going to look at the diagonal part. I'm going to look at that part of the triangle. Now that, that part of the triangle, the height of that triangle, I know it looks like the length, but the height of that triangle is two. So I want to make, you know, if I'm doing the scale, I want my triangle to be half that, or not half that, sorry, I want it not to do half. We want it to be three times. We want it to be three times, so. <clears throat> so from here, that's the middle, right there, I want to count six. So there's three, and there's six. So there's a, there's a scale right there using a factor of so scale factor equals three. Oh, it says label it A. I just all right. So they got A, but the scale factor is still three. Whatever. All right. Draw a scaled copy of the polygon with a factor of one half. All right. So um, so yeah, if we're gonna do first one. So everything's going to be one F. So the twos are going to become ones. You know, just like that. And then this part right there, that's one half. That's a lot tinier. There you go. And we're going to label that one B. B as in girl, right? No, B as in boy. All right. And sorry about the noise. What else do we got to do? Is polygon A a uh, scaled copy of B? If so, what is the scale factor that takes it from B from B to A? And um, yeah, that it is a scale. I mean, these are it almost seems too obvious, but yeah, this is from B to A. That A is a square uh, scale factor of B. B is B is a scale factor of, of A as well. Pardon me with all the noise. Things are just dropping. But um, what is the scale factor that takes it from B to A? Well, B to A, well, B has all just ones. This has a six. So that has a scale factor of six. It's a messy S. Yes. 